Greetings once again, Pirates on the High Seas. Dudes this then, back once again with One Piece. Previously, it was Luffy versus Kizaru. And I gotta say, versus is a very generous concept. As, while Luffy does manage to go into Gear 5 and grab a hold of Kizaru and stop his assassination attempt on Vegapunk, Kizaru easily makes his way back after being thrown miles off of Egghead, at the speed of light no less. We even get to see him bust out light clones to distract Luffy, because Luffy isn't his target. He's not there to take care of Luffy, he's there for Vegapunk. But Vegapunk has made his way out to try to get to Bonnie determined to protect her, but that puts him in the sights of Kizaru, who aims a well-placed shot right at Vegapunk's vehicle that Luffy eats. I mean, he's a hungry boy, but a light snack like that might do more damage than good. Meanwhile, Zoro is facing off against Rob Lucci, leaving the question of who will come out on top, the King of Hell or the Killer Cat. They seem to be evenly matched though so far. A lot more evenly matched than Lucci was with Luffy. But we also saw that when Jewelry Bonnie was sent flying out of the lab phase by Kizaru, having been shocked by the defense grid, it was sent to Maru, who managed to regain consciousness, if only temporarily, who managed to catch her before she hit the ground. Meanwhile, Vegapunk has taken Atlas in the Vega Tank 8, making their way down to the Fabrio phase, with Sanji and Frankie coming aboard. Sanji because a young woman is in danger, and Frankie because he's determined to make things up in the eyes of Vegapunk, who kind of called her a called him out on the fact that he wasn't able to protect Bonnie. Well, Frankie has told Lilith to use the General Frankie to move the Thousand Sunny, which I'm not quite sure how big the General Frankie should be. It shouldn't be any bigger than the Thousand Sunny, but hey, maybe it's tough enough to lift something a little over its own height. While Atlas has managed to take command of the Pacifista Mark III, since Vegapunk should be the highest authority there. That is, well, considering no one knows the Saint Jagar Shia Saturn is there. Will he make himself finally known? Or will Kizaru get things back on track? Join me as I find out, won't you? Alright, a cool cover spread showing... It took me a minute to realize, but these are all the members of the Shumotsuki family. Which kind of, you know, triggered in my mind. That's right, Zoro and Kawina, though a fair bit of a distance, are related. That's right, Kuzuburo, who we've never actually seen fight, but <laughs> given the skills we've seen from most Shimotskis, mm, you never know. Kyoshiro, who we also have never seen fight, Kuina, who is unfortunately dead, Ryuma, Ushimaro, Yasui, which I also wonder, did Yasui put together that he and Zoro were related? Is that why they got on so well? Because I remember thinking that when Yasue and Zoro were hanging out, it just, it seemed odd. Like, man, usually Zoro doesn't seem like the kind of person who would take to someone like Yasue. But he did. And I'm guessing that's the dragon that Ryuma slew in the background. Whose eye is that? Maybe Zoro's dad? But he wasn't part of the Shimoski family, yeah. Or no. No, he was, he was a part of the family, yeah, by birth, so it might be Zoro's dad. But that was a common complaint about a lot of things, that Zoro didn't really, you know, embrace anything about his heritage while in Wano. Which leaves me kind of wondering if maybe that'll take place somewhere down the line. Some people have gotten all haughty about it, it's just like, Oh, if it didn't happen there, it shouldn't happen anyplace else. It's like, why? Oda has had plenty of stuff that should have been relevant to a certain arc happen chapters upon chapters later, so... I mean, so many people praise Oda for his long game, but when Oda implements the long game in some ca cases, they get all bent out of shape. I'm like, I wouldn't mind finding something out later. Maybe that's just me. 103 Mercy's Dragon Damnation. Okay. That's that's the attack Zoro did against King, right? 
I think so. Hmm. Something significant about that attack? Huh. What is relevant about this? Is Oda trying to tell us something, or are we about to see Zoro at least something powerful against Rob Luch? Huh, I wonder. Alright. One Piece Chapter 1095. Fell five elders, godhead of science and defense, St. J. Garcia Satter. So, uh, looks like the old man's about to make his move. We have Atlas's call. Wipe out all the Navy sailors on the island. And since it's a Vegapunk dictating it, that over everything else. The Marines seeing the Vega Tank 8 coming down from the Labophage. The Marines call out, was that an order? From Vegapunk? That's not good. And all the pacifistas hear it. And they set their sights, and more importantly, their lasers, on the Marines. Ooh, causing mass destruction. Just boom, 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 explosions from the pacifistas' laser fire. The Marines call out, stay away from the pacifistas! You see one Marine hiding under some rubble as some others get blown away. Another pacifista using his mouth laser. I'ma fire my laser! Blah! screams in the distance. The marines ready themselves saying, huh, huh, so does this mean Vegapunks come down from above? And one points them out, the, points out the Vega Tank 8 saying, up there. Meanwhile, Vegapunk says, search for Bonnie Atlas. And Atlas just pops out saying, Bonnie! <laughs> like, I... I don't know if that's how that's gonna work out, but you never know. Meanwhile, Frankie is marking out saying, how is this thing driving straight down? We should be falling. Vegapunk, who's doing the old man drive, says, By their nature, island clouds will clump together. Oh, oh, that's, ah. That's why the wheels are made of island cloud. That's actually smart. Meanwhile, Sanji, like Atlas, is also poking his head out of the bubble tank, saying, Bonnie, where are you? While Vegapunk continues his explanation, saying, the tires of the, of the Vega tank are made of island clouds, which means we will not plummet off. Meanwhile, Sanji, I think using observation hockey, calls out, I found her. <laughs> While Frankie's like, you did, Sanji? Sanji calls out, when has my lady radar ever been wrong? <laughs> Vegapunk says, that sounds very unscientific, but I'll take it on faith. <laughs> I love a scientist who's just like, a scientist, that makes no sense, but... You know what? Go for it. <laughs> Maybe I'll find out an explanation later. Or not. I don't really care right now. <laughs> Sanji calls out, Thanks, pal. Only problem is, this tank ain't up to my speed. I gotta go check on her. And he just uses his Skywalk. Or Blue Walk? No, no, that's the C1. Skywalk, I think it is. To go dashing downward, as Frankie calls out for Sanji. Meanwhile, we pick back up with Bonnie, who was hiding behind some rubble as well. And with Bonnie thinking, good thing the pacifistas are on our side now. But then one of the vice admirals calls out, Bonnie, the pirate's over here! And he goes swinging in with a pole arm with a clam attached to it? Oh, weird. I mean, hey, if it makes a good weapon. I think it's a vice admiral. Yeah, he's dressed like a vice admiral. Also nice Bonnie butt shot. I heard that Odo specifically designed the girls' outfits like this because while he's known for boobs, he's not so much known for drawing nice butts and he just wanted to get in the practice. Like, <laughs> I mean... I kept wondering that, because I'm just like, are all the girls in, like, panties? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of, like, swimsuits and stuff. But even still, bit distracting. Bonnie pulls out her gun, does a little flipping motion, too, I think. As another Marine calls out, I see Jewelry Bonnie. And she shoots three of them down using NDE, near-death experience. Also flipping in the air, doing the splits, like, man, Oda, you are not being subtle. Shoots all of them in the head. The Marine doesn't seem to take damage from that, but as he holds his head, he sees himself, or he turns into a skeleton, or he feels like he's turning into a skeleton. But then he's back to normal, and he just kind of falls over. And the others are writhing in pain on the ground. The Vice Admiral says, hey, what's wrong with you? Well, one of the ones who were hit by the near-death experience rounds from Bonnie say, I saw the river Styx. So it ba makes you feel like you're experiencing your life fade away. Jeez. Very tricky, sis. And one of the Marines call out as, for as Bonnie goes racing and leaping over the rubble saying, get back here, Bonnie. Huh. That's odd. One of the pacifistas blocked Bonnie's way, saying, No escape for you. Bonnie's shocked, saying, Huh? 
Why? Oh, we see one of the Vice Admirals, the old lady riding on the back of one. It's Navy H... Headquarters Vice Admiral Bluegrass. <laughs> I know what kind of music she likes. Jazz. Old Lady Bluegrass says, I can control any individual regardless of anything else. As a driver with the ride ride fruit. <laughs> um, that has some terrible implications, but okay. I can take a ride on anything and anyone. She has the pacifista charge up its laser. So if she jumps on your back, she can convert you into essentially a vehicle for her. She says, if I kill you, would that undo the curse you put on our soldiers? And while the pacifista is charging out, Bonnie's stuck like a deer in the headlights, thinking, Dad. Oh, Bonnie. Bluegrass calls out, give back their proper ages. And the pacifista fires as, yeah, that's Sanji who manages to get Bonnie out of the way at the last second. As they hit the ground, Sanji says, come on, Bonnie, don't start spacing out now. Bonnie says, oh, Blackleg. Sanji tells her, I heard about how Kuma's your old man, but you gotta be smarter than this or else you'll... But it's at the last minute he notices, oh, that's the marine with the clamshell, but he's transformed into... I honestly can't tell what he is. Almost looks like it has sp Thoughts or or no that's the shading some kind of big fluffy tail is it a dog i really can't make out what he is oh that's why he wields a clam i just had to read the attack he does when he slams down his clam weapon an otter hammer he's an otter man thank you for that oda because i'm like i can't tell what he's supposed to be why does he have a clam as a weapon? He's an otter. There it is. Which is funny, because don't otters usually use rocks to open clams? It's interesting that he has it the other way around, where he used the clam to open your head. But Sanji scoops up Bonnie and runs off from the attack, saying, Let's just get out of here. Vegapunk rolls up, saying, Sanji, Bonnie, get on! Get in, losers! We're headed back to the Labophage! Sanji calls out Vegapunk as he races for the Vega Tank 8 that's pretty much drifting onto the scene. Atlas calls out, The pacifistas are on our side now. We're heading back up. Is, is Frankie still in the tank? I think I can make out parts of him. It's a little blocked out by the wheel. Meanwhile, back in the labo phase, Luffy is still doing battle with Admiral Kizaru. Kizaru says, listen, I'm sorry, but if I spend all my time on you, I can't fulfill my mission. Oh, he's actually starting to breathe a little heavy, though. Luffy says, yeah, but that's my mission. Kizaru says, I can't have that, and he takes off for the edge of the labo phage, with Lucy, Luffy racing behind with his friggin' super peel-out attack, saying, hey, wait up. Oh, suddenly they all sense something. Kizaru senses it and says, hmm? Luffy senses it and gets serious all of a sudden. Zoro, who's still Still battling Rob Lucci is taken off guard saying, what's that? And Rob Lucci senses it, Jimbei senses it as well, saying, what is that on this unearthly present? Huh. I think Usopp senses it saying, hurry, hurry to Chopper and Nami who are bringing someone on a gurney? Who is that? Is that? They have a bit of a pronounced nose. I can't really make out who that's supposed to be. It's not Robin, is it? But then Dahl and another Vice Admiral feels it with them saying, it can't be. So they recognize it? Ah. Oh. And then a voice calls out. It has to be. Pacifistas, stand down. And the pacifistas stop. The hell is that? A pentagram? What the hell? Quite literally. Hell. What the hell? Wait. <laughs> what? Um. A <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm caught off guard by a freaking pentagram appearing. Like, what? Are we actually gonna have magic? Okay, um, the, the Vega Tank 8 is cruising down. Everybody's inside. I think it's Bonnie who calls out, What's this? The pacifistas aren't escorting us anymore. Atlas says, Hey, follow your orders. Why? The only thing above us on the authority hierarchy is the five elders. <laughs> and Atlas gets dead serious, like, uh oh. And yeah, suddenly a pentagram appears right in front of a lot of the marines. One calls out a magic pentagram? And as the Vega Tank 8 makes his way up one of the clouds, I think maybe Atlas is saying, this is odd, let's hurry on up, something is coming. And then an alert goes out across the island from the Marines, alert to all units on location. Saint Saturn of the Five Elders is disembarking on Egghead. The Marines call out, what? The Five Elders? And a massive plume of 
black fire and smoke. Are we summoning a demon? <laughs> what? Why is it like this? The announcement goes, Commodores and below aren't even allowed to have an audience with them. Oh. The people are screaming down below. Oh god, what does this mean? It as the Vega Tank 8 continues to make its way up. Inside they say, what was that explosion? The five elders, they've come all the way here? Five what? Vegapunk says, they're the highest authority in the world. Frankie says, say what? Vegapunk says, we've got to get out of here. Hold on tight. And some dark figure starts to appear in the middle of the pentagram. It says five, and it's a five-pointed star. Five elder stars, five-pointed star like a pentagram? What? <laughs> Excuse me? Um, what does it mean that he's able to appear like this? Like, dude, you were a few miles away. Why are you showing up like this? Sanji looks down and says, something's coming out of that circle. What the fuck? Demons? Okay, that is not a cow. <laughs> Everyone was just like, oh, he transformed into some kind of cow-like creature. That is not a cow. That, that is not a cow. He, what the fuck am I looking at? And he's already in an awakened state to, what the hell? Like, he came out, like, at the height of his power. The Marines look on, saying, what is that monster? Another one says, don't say it. I have a feeling that's... And Garcia's eye shines and <laughs> the Marine just loses his head. I don't know if it explodes. It looks like something hit him. And he arrives. A humanoid form with spider-like legs that seem like they're on fire or is that a pattern on them? Jesus freaking Christ, what the hell is this? Highest authority in the world. Five elders... Godhead of Science and Defense, Saint J. Garcia Saturn. And Saturn says, Ah, the surface. It has been a, such a long time. Okay then. What are they? You know, thinking about it, Luffy has the power of a sun god. What if they have legitimate devil fruit? Like, the devil! Like creatures from hell. Bonnie looks down saying, what is that horrible thing? While Sanji, who has just been noticing things left, right, and center, says, up above, watch out. Uh, one of Kizaru's lasers cuts through the island cloud that they were driving on. As they call out, the island cloud, cloud Kizaru. While Kizaru is up above saying, oops, so close. While Luffy is finally managing to catch up, he Bulks up in his muscle muscle form, saying, Stop right there, Kizaru. While Kizaru says, You must be reaching your limit by now. How do you know how much of a limit he has? Is it because he understands awakenings? He must, because they all have the ribbon around them. Huh. Frankie calls out, Please, Luffy, do something! And just as Luffy's about to say, That's what I'm. Oof. Kizaru manages to blast him in the face with another, one of his laser shops shots that kind of knock Luffy for a loop, but then he uses gum gum, and Kizaru, I think, sees it coming, but I don't think he understood what he's seeing, because he goes, huh? And then Luffy uses gum gum star gun, which, you know, his fist is coated in hockey, and it hits Kizaru in the head, and it has the rubber effect that it had on Kaido, where it's bulging out the other side, and Kizaru thinks, I'm seeing stars. So, did that not Kizaru for a loop, or... Ah, oh, shit. And Luffy says, that's my limit. And he deflates into his old man form. Frankie calls out Luffy, while Garcia on the ground says, Ni thinks Nika. There's some explosion, and, you know, a couple of things hit the ground hard. Was it both Kizaru and Luffy? Yeah, we see Luffy on the ground. Yeah, Saturn is straight up a spider demon. Okay, gonna have to look up what that probably is. It makes me think of like, um, like Onigumo or something like that. Whereas Black Maria, she had to alter her state to have an appearance like that. But I think for Saturn, that's a natural state for him. Well, awakened, but even still. <sighs> that is that is a special kind of terrifying to look at, honestly. <laughs> like, the more I look at it, the more freaky it is. Like, something that would come from the depths of hell. But the Vega Tank 
8 hits the ground hard, breaking apart because it was, you know, contained in a bubble. Everyone go gets flung outside. Ooh, this isn't good. Oh, and they all land before St. J. Garcia Saturn. Frankie helps Vegapunk up, saying, You okay, Vegapunk? Sanji managed to catch Bonnie, saying... But he then says, Atlas, are you hurt? Atlas gets up saying, I'm fine. Vegapunk looks up at Saturn saying, Saint Saturn. And Saturn says, indeed. I thought we already had you killed, Vegapunk. Oh, a memory fills Bonnie's mind. It isn't defined that it's one of the Gorosei speaking from the memory. But they say, I gave you an order, Vegapunk. He must not have any will left. And Vegapunk says, but, but that's, that'll mean Kuma is. And Bonnie goes racing off, picking off a sword. Sanji calls for Bonnie saying, Bonnie, no. She takes the sword and she just plunges it right into Saturn's heart and she screams out Saint Saturn but yeah blood spurts from the wound but Bonnie is the one with tears in her eyes jeez it would be wild if Bonnie killed one of the Gorosei though but I mean attacking one she's gonna get the bounty of bounties like jeez if she manages to live like I could easily see Bonnie getting almost up to a billion bounty for something like this because even if she just only remotely injured him, to injure a celestial dragon? A Tenryu B2, a world noble, like, dude! <laughs> then again, I mean, what was Luffy's bounty? Yeah, I had to look it up. Luffy's bounty only ended up at 40,000. I mean, 400 million after everything that happened. I mean... Yeah, Luffy's bounty only kept increasing like a hundred million each time despite the fact that he kept challenging some greater enemies. He hit a celestial dragon, declared... No, um, he'd already declared war. But from him hitting a celestial dragon, um, taking part in the Marine Corps War and infiltrating Impel Down and freeing all those prisoners, his bounty only went up a hundred million. Yep, someone already looked it up. An Ushi Ona, Oni from Japanese folklore. Head of an ox, body of a spider with six legs. Okay. So yeah, Japanese demonic creature. So that's probably what we should be looking into for a lot of the other um, elders. Japanese demons and legendary creatures. But there's so many. There are so many. But she attacked one of the five elders though. And Bonnie's bounty is a little over where Luffy... Current bounty is like... 320 million, which is a little over where Luffy was at before he punched the Celestial Dragon, I think. Because after a time skip, didn't he only end up at, uh, didn't he end up at 400 million after the time skip? Yeah, it was after the time skip, so, <sighs> depends. So it really depends on just how big uh, the Gorosei are in the eyes of the people and the government in general. It is pretty metal if Bonnie is the very first person to actually injure one of the five elders though. Huh. I mean, does that show that she has armament hockey too? That she was able to injure him? Or did he just not see the attack coming? I mean, he has to have some great form of hockey because when he arrived, Kizaru, Luffy, Luchi, Zoro, all took notice of it. Jinbei. Also, Bonnie needs like a regular, like, regular weapon she has, because she has picked up every weapon imaginable to attack. Pipes, laser swords, guns, katana. She has used everything and anything. Oh, actually, maybe she's actually using the katana to, like, manipulate his age or something. Might not be going in for the kill, but to get him vulnerable. But then again, he might overcome her with his own hockey. I mean, we've seen her pick up any variety of weaponry and use it for whatever means she needed to. I mean, she's shockingly resourceful. Like, definitely not the most powerful, but her versatility when push comes to shove is like, okay, she does what she needs to. I don't know, I want to see Bonnie actually do some damage, but I mean, ugh. Bonnie's a little out of her depth in this situation, it feels like. This is bad. This is really bad. What power could he wield? It's incredibly ironic that... Yeah, yeah, because it looks like he has cow ears. So yeah, that might be it. What they said, the Ushi... Who? Ushi Ona? The Ushi Oni? 
Huh. So, yeah, we weren't off about the cow completely, but it was a subversion. Hmm. Bonnie has to live long enough for at least to get, for us to at least get her flashback. I, I don't know. I don't see Bonnie dying here. I mean, to have only gotten so far and so much information out of what her deal is with Kuma, if I feel like if we had gotten her full backstory and the backstory of Kuma, it, she would die. But until we see something like that, I, I think she, she's safe for now. Next chapter, who knows? Though. You know, it's interesting. Atlas also has cow ears. I wonder if there's if there's some correlation there. I don't know. I've been lingering on this page for the longest time. Like, is there something more? And Luffy, he spent with what Luffy did to Kizuru. Does did that take him out of the picture for a hot minute? How badly did they get hurt? Zoro and Luchi are still going. I mean, yeah, Zoro and Luchi are still going at, it, so they're still pretty even. I've heard people say that Zoro hasn't put on the bandana, so. He's not serious yet, but I don't know, man. It gets hard to tell sometimes. I don't know, we'll see. Ugh, that's all I could really think of. I don't know, it's just so badass that Bonnie just took that sword and just went for the stab, just like... <laughs> that's so cool. Like, dang. Oh, well. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this demon fruit? What do you think it could be? Is it more than just a demonic zone? Could they be... Demon Demon Fruits? The Demon Demon Fruit model Ushi Oni. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm still soaking it all in. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the ride. And until next time, I've been Dudes This Then. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you later. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>